Day 107. 2 Samuel 1-2. After the death of Saul, David returned from the slaughter of the Amalekites and stayed in Ziklag two days. On the third day a man with torn clothes and dust on his head arrived from Saul's camp. When he came to David, he fell to the ground to pay him homage. Where have you come from? David asked. I have escaped from the Israelite camp, he replied. What was the outcome? David asked. Please tell me. The troops fled from the battle, he replied. Many of them fell and died. And Saul and his son Jonathan are also dead. Then David asked the young man who had brought him the report, How do you know that Saul and his son Jonathan are dead? I happened to be on Mount Gilboa, he replied, and there was Saul, leaning on his spear, with the chariots and the cavalry closing in on him. When he turned around and saw me, he called out and I answered, Here I am. Who are you? He asked. So I told him, I am an Amalekite. Then he begged me, Stand over me and kill me, for agony has seized me, but my life still lingers. So I stood over him and killed him, because I knew that after he had fallen he could not survive. And I took the crown that was on his head and the band that was on his arm, and I have brought them here to my lord. Then David took hold of his own clothes and tore them, and all the men who were with him did the same. They mourned and wept and fasted until evening for Saul and his son Jonathan, and for the people of the Lord and the house of Israel, because they had fallen by the sword. And David inquired of the young man who had brought him the report, Where are you from? I am the son of a foreigner, he answered. I am an Amalekite. So David asked him, Why were you not afraid to lift your hand to destroy the Lord's anointed? Then David summoned one of the young men and said, Go, execute him. So the young man struck him down, and he died. For David had said to the Amalekite, Your blood be on your own head because your own mouth has testified against you, saying, I killed the Lord's anointed. Then David took up this lament for Saul and his son Jonathan, and he ordered that the sons of Judah be taught the song of the bow. It is written in the book of Jasher, Your glory, O Israel, lies slain on your heights. How the mighty have fallen! Tell it not in Gath, proclaim it not in the streets of Ashkelon, lest the daughters of the Philistines rejoice, and the daughters of the uncircumcised exult. O mountains of Gilboa, may you have no dew or rain, no fields yielding offerings of grain. For there the shield of the mighty was defiled, the shield of Saul, no longer anointed with oil. From the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan did not retreat, and the sword of Saul did not return empty. Saul and Jonathan, beloved and delightful in life, were not divided in death. They were swifter than eagles, they were stronger than lions. O daughters of Israel, weep for Saul, who clothed you in scarlet and luxury, who decked your garments with ornaments of gold. How the mighty have fallen in the thick of battle! Jonathan lies slain on your heights. I grieve for you, Jonathan, my brother. You were delightful to me, your love to me was extraordinary, surpassing the love of women. How the mighty have fallen and the weapons of war have perished! Some time later, David inquired of the Lord, Should I go up to one of the towns of Judah? Go up, the Lord answered. Then David asked, Where should I go? To Hebron, replied the Lord. So David went there with his two wives, Ahinoam of Jezreel and Abigail the widow of Nabal of Carmel. David also took the men who were with him, each with his household, and they settled in the towns near Hebron. Then the men of Judah came to Hebron, and there they anointed David king over the house of Judah. And they told David, it was the men of Jabesh Gilead who buried Saul. So David sent messengers to the men of Jabesh Gilead to tell them, The Lord bless you, because you showed this kindness to Saul your Lord when you buried him. Now may the Lord show you loving devotion and faithfulness, and I will also show you the same favor because you have done this. Now then, be strong and courageous, for though Saul your Lord is dead, the house of Judah has anointed me as their king. Meanwhile, Abner son of Nah, the commander of Saul's army, took Saul's son Ishbosheth, moved him to Mahanaim, and made him king over Gilead, Asher, Jezreel, Ephraim, and Benjamin, over all Israel. Saul's son Ishbosheth was forty years old when he began to reign over Israel, and he reigned for two years. The house of Judah, however, followed David. And the length of time that David was king in Hebron over the house of Judah was seven years and six months. One day Abner son of Nah and the servants of Ishbosheth son of Saul marched out from Mahanaim to Gibeon. So Job son of Zeruiah, along with the servants of David, marched out and met them by the pool of Gibeon. 
and the two camps took up positions on opposite sides of the pool. Then Abner said to Job, Let us have the young men get up and compete before us. Let them get up, Job replied. So they got up and were counted off, twelve for Benjamin and Ishbosheth son of Saul, and twelve for David. Then each man grabbed his opponent by the head and thrust his sword into his opponent's side, and they all fell together. So this place, which is in Gibeon, is called Helkoth Hazarim. The battle that day was intense, and Abner and the men of Israel were defeated by the servants of David. The three sons of Zeruiah were there, Job, Abishai, and Asahel. Now Asahel was fleet of foot like a wild gazelle, and he chased Abner, not turning to the right or to the left in his pursuit. And Abner glanced back and said, Is that you, Asahel? It is, Asahel replied. So Abner told him, Turn to your right or to your left, seize one of the young men, and take his equipment for yourself. But Asahel would not stop chasing him. Once again, Abner warned Asahel, Stop chasing me. Why should I strike you to the ground? How could I show my face to your brother Job? But Asahel refused to turn away, so Abner thrust the butt of his spear into his stomach, and it came out his back, and he fell dead on the spot. And every man paused when he came to the place where Asahel had fallen and died. But Job and Abishai pursued Abner. By sunset, they had gone as far as the hill of Amma opposite Jah on the way to the wilderness of Gibeon. The Benjamites rallied to Abner, formed a single unit, and took their stand atop a hill. Then Abner called out to Job, Must the sword devour forever? Do you not realize that this will only end in bitterness? How long before you tell the troops to stop pursuing their brothers? As surely as God lives, Job replied, If you had not spoken up, the troops would have continued pursuing their brothers until morning. So Job blew the ram's horn, and all the troops stopped, they no longer pursued Israel or continued to fight. And all that night Abner and his men marched through the Araba. They crossed the Jordan, marched all morning, and arrived at Mahanaim. When Job returned from pursuing Abner, he gathered all the troops. In addition to Asahel, nineteen of David's servants were missing, but they had struck down three hundred and sixty Benjamites who were with Abner. Later, they took Asahel and buried him in his father's tomb in Bethlehem. Then Job and his men marched all night and reached Hebron at daybreak. Luke 14 verses 1 to 24. One Sabbath, Jesus went to eat in the home of a leading Pharisee, and those in attendance were watching him closely. Right there before him was a man with dropsy. So Jesus asked the experts in the law and the Pharisees, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? But they remained silent. Then Jesus took hold of the man, healed him, and sent him on his way. And he asked them, which of you whose son or ox falls into a pit on the Sabbath day will not immediately pull him out? And they were unable to answer these questions. When Jesus noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable, when you are invited to a wedding banquet, do not sit in the place of honor, in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited. Then the host who invited both of you will come and tell you, give this man your seat. And in humiliation, you will have to take the last place. But when you are invited, go and sit in the last place, so that your host will come and tell you, Friend, move up to a better place. Then you will be honored in front of everyone at the table with you. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Then Jesus said to the man who had invited him, When you host a dinner or a banquet, do not invite your friends or brothers or relatives or rich neighbors. Otherwise, they may invite you in return, and you will be repaid. But when you host a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed. Since they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. When one of those reclining with him heard this, he said to Jesus, Blessed is everyone who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. But Jesus replied, A certain man prepared a great banquet and invited many guests. When it was time for the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, Come, for everything is now ready. But one after another they all began to make excuses. The first one said, I have bought a field, and I need to go see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I am going to try them out. Please excuse me. Still another said, I have married a wife, so I cannot come. The servant returned and reported all this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the city, and bring in the poor, the crippled, 
the blind, and the lame. Sir, the servant replied, what you ordered has been done. And there is still room. So the master told his servant, go out to the highways and hedges and compel them to come in, so that my house will be full. For I tell you, not one of those men who were invited will taste my banquet.